Hey everyone, thanks for joining us on Ludicrous Feed. I'm with Joy Ryder today. Hello. And today we are going to talk about that Elon Musk interview with uh, Joe Rogan. Now, that interview was two and a half hours long, so Joy and I finally bit the bullet and sat down and watched it over a few sessions. It's a pretty pretty long interview, wasn't it? Mm, it was. So we're going to try and do our best to, um, to go through it and give you the highlights of that interview. So the first thing that they talked about was Elon Musk's flamethrower. So he explained that the inspiration for that actually came from Spaceballs, clearly his favourite movie because a lot of references from his cars are from Spaceballs. The next thing they talked about was the um, Boring Company, and this company, as you may know, builds tunnels under Los Angeles. Um, he kept insisting that uh, it's just a big hole in the ground, but um, Joe Rogan goes down the line of questioning of basically, where do you get permission to do this? Like, who, are you, who do you ask? Um, but Elon keeps insisting it's just a big hole, a big pit, basically. It'll be interesting to see what happens with it um i think joe rogan was trying to ask so who like where have you actually got permission to do this i mean obviously you can't just go building tunnels underneath other people's property um i'm not sure elon quite understood what joe was getting at um he seemed to think that he was just talking about the current hole in the ground that he has which if it's on his own property or um you know that's fine i think it was more of what happens when you start building tunnels underneath other people's property, what's going to happen there, and I don't think that was really resolved in the interview. Yeah, it sounded like he, um, either one was being very coy or two, he just didn't get the question, he just mm. didn't see what the big problem was. Yeah. Okay, so then we moved into Tesla, which is what I was quite interested in. Um, so he was saying how there's a lot of Easter eggs in, in the Tesla cars, like the Model X has a Christmas Easter egg. Um, where it plays the music from the Trans-Siberian Orchestra with the, the wings are flapping and all that. Why does Elon put Easter eggs uh, into cars? Like, Joe was asking, why the heck do you do this? And Elon just said, because it's fun. And that goes back to his theme of enjoying the journey. Mm. Um, and he said, driving a Tesla is the most fun you could possibly have. And I, I tend to agree with that. His aim is to maximize the enjoyment of his cars. And uh, he's sort of done that with the current iteration of version 9 where he's put video games in his car. Um, Elon himself drives a 61 Series 1 E-Type Jaguar, which is only one of two gasoline cars he owns. The other one is a Ford Model T, given to him as a gift from a friend. Goes back to Tesla again, where he talks about um, autopilot navigation issues. Autopilot navigation allows you to lane change, to exit freeways, overtake cars. Um, that's To me, that's actually quite scary, having autopilot cars with like regular cars. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure that you can predict all the kind of decisions that humans are going to make um so not only are they going to have to predict what humans should be doing but they're also going to have to predict when humans might not make the right choice but then again you know if if a computer can make um you know thousands of like you know analyze thousands of observations and then make decisions based on that logically it would actually be faster and better than if a human was to make those decisions so I mean, with the LA road system the way it is, if if they're going to get it right anywhere, and they've got the best testing ground for it, so yep. Yep. yeah, I don't I don't actually think it's as bad as people say. Mm. I mean, I personally wouldn't use autopilot um, the way it is now, but the the idea is right, I it's think, right. and yep. the logic is there. The impetus for him getting autopilot out quickly was um, in his early Teslas, there was a guy that fell asleep on the highway and killed a cyclist, and he said he really needed to get it out for safety issues. He said people fall asleep in their cars all the time and they crash, at least in a Tesla, that won't happen. Back to the tunnels again, um, interesting point, he said that uh, we currently have a two-dimensional road system, whereas we work and live in a 3D environment. So our roads are actually very low density, uh, very inefficient. So you either got to go up or down with your transport. Um, and he reckons you can go way more down than up. It's far more efficient use of space, apparently. Back to Tesla, the Roadster 2. Um, this made Joe sit up and went, what? Because he said the Z Roadster 2 Standard Edition can go from 0 to 100 kilometers in 1.9 seconds. And Joe just went, Standard mm -hmm. Edition? What the heck are you talking about? Right? Um, he says, no, there's going to be a performance package. Uh, there can be rocket thrusters, and I think Joe tried to catch him out and said, "Like, what does it burn?" And he said, "No." Of course, Elon has an answer for everything. He said, mm. "It's it's going to use ultra high pressure com compressed air, sucking air out with an electric pump at um, ten thousand psi." 
Back to tunnels again. Uh, so air versus tunneling. Um, he says flying cars. Essentially, he's he's thought this through, and this goes back to the fact that he thinks pretty much everything through. Mm. It's just like his mind just works so quickly. But he says um, flying cars are going to be like basically drones or helicopters. Uh, it's just too impractical. You can't have a flying car in a suburban area. It's just way too noisy. I mean, it, we we heard a drone the other day in the backyard, right? Someone, one of our neighbours, was flying mm. a drone, and that was so noisy already. You can't imagine like the, a two-ton vehicle being flown like a drone. I mean, maybe other people have considered it and it's just not been made public, but I never thought about how noisy it would be, um, mm. you know? And, uh, yeah, I think he's absolutely spot on. It's just, it's way, way too noisy. Yep. So. All right, back to Tesla and climate science and sustainability, something I'm a bit more interested in. Elon sort of stuck to his game and said, your priority one is electric cars for sustainability movement. Uh, We're playing a crazy game with oceans and atmosphere. We're going to run out of oil eventually, and it's not logical to keep using oil. Do you remember when we were kids at school, we just kept learning about how there was not enough oil to get go around mm. the humans eventually? He said that this is the dumbest experiment in human history, putting all this carbon in the ground into the air. There are 2.5 billion cars and trucks around the world. If new production becomes 100% electric of all vehicles, we're going to get 100 million cars per year on the road. It will still take 25 years to get the world to 100% electric. They can't always factor in what's going to happen in the future. And I mean, I think the take up of mobile phones is probably a classic example of that, that it was taken up so much quicker um, than anyone thought. And even in um, developing nations, you know, people will rather have a mobile phone than, you know, they have a mobile phone, they don't necessarily have running water or a toilet um, or electricity. So I think you can try and extrapolate these things, but because you don't know everything that's going to be happening in the future, um, I don't necessarily think it's going to be 25 years. Hopefully not. Hopefully it'll be quicker than that. Uh, photovoltaic panels make sense because there's a giant nuclear reactor in the sky that is the sun. It's reliable. It shows up every day. Solar panels, store the energy in batteries, power your cars and your home during the night time. You can have energy 24 hours a day. Makes sense to me. Yeah. I mean, I think that's like that's the real key message that he needs to get out because it's it just makes so much sense as he said the sun is in the sky every day i mean yes sometimes there might be cloud coverage but you know everywhere in the world the sun is going to be there Mm. um and it's there and as he said it's like a giant nuclear reactor it's exploding it's producing energy and we can capture that energy so it just seems you know, it just seems like an absolute no-brainer to to yeah. harness that energy. Elon, if you're watching, stick to your message. That's going to sell cars. They need to be better than gasoline cars currently. They need to be more compelling. Um, they need to go far enough, and they need to recharge faster. But I, I think when he's talking about transitioning to electric cars, and he likened it to when you went from horses to gasoline mm. cars, and I mean, and that there was a time when they were both on the road. And I think the the bottom line is that electric cars need to be um, cheaper, more reliable, mm-hmm. um, and then people will, you know, it just it's just an obvious decision. And at at, at the moment, because it's still s- sort of new, you know, people don't want to take it on board because they're unfamiliar with it. Mm. You know, they're like, well, what happens if this, what happens if that? Okay, so solar panels on cars, that's the next point. He, When he first had uh, conceived of Tesla, he thought of a, a car that you push a button and it sort of folds out solar panels so they can charge in a parking lot. But then, you know, the car could be in a shade or in a garage, so he quickly ditched that idea. Um, and then Joe talked about whether his batteries are waterproof. Of course they are. Um, they referred to, like, the Fisker cars in Long Island blowing up in the rain. Um, if you haven't seen that video, go watch that. All right, back to Tesla again. So they talked about where they test these cars. Um, do Teslas have good traction on snow and ice? Yes, they do, especially on black ice. Um, they do cold weather testing in Sweden, Norway, Canada, and other cold countries like that. Electric cars have very good traction because the reaction time is fast, not like a gasoline car. So gasoline cars have latency. You push the accelerator pedal, it's going to take a little while to go. But electric cars, if you've ever driven one, it's, it just goes straight away. He said, think of uh, an electric car like a surgical device. You would never want a surgical device like a cautery or diathermy to ever be gasoline powered because it just would be too slow. Like you press the button and it wouldn't work for like a couple of seconds. And that just would not be cool if you were doing surgery. So an electric car with its motor is a bit like that. It just, it just goes because it's so quick. And because they're fast, it on ice, um, it reacts very quickly. So as soon as it touches ice, it will just go like that within a few seconds or even milliseconds. And then as soon as it gets off the ice, it just it goes back to normal traction. 
So we humans are like snails compared to an electric motor's reaction time. We just cannot react as quick as a computer would to an electric motor. I like the sort of the foundational stuff, which is the fact that the batteries underneath it's providing you know a low center of gravity so I, I think more of it in terms of that and the fact that there's you know a larger crumple zone because of um there's no massive engine, engine sitting in the front yep. so it's these sort of like you know um really obvious but critical design aspects of the car that i think make it so safe um he said the sx and model 3 have the lowest probability of injury of any car ever tested by the united states government he had one good story which i liked which is that people are going to sue no matter what you do and people still sue tesla like there was a person had an accident um at 60 miles an hour which is 100 kilometers an hour with a twisted ankle and they slipped but they'd still sue tesla even though they'd be dead in any other car um that guy with that story i said at the beginning where he fell asleep in his tesla and ran over the cyclist um, which spurred Elon to bring out the autopilot system. That guy also sued Tesla, and he blamed it on the new car smell. I think Elon did the right thing in the interview, which is that he didn't focus on the the negative aspects and just sort of, you know, fighting back or or being defensive, but he took the situation and just said, okay, what, you know, we can't change the past, but how can we improve, improve. for the future? So I think that's a good attitude to have. Yep. I mean, new car spell is distracting, though. I must say, it's very nice. You can buy that, I think. You can, yeah. you can buy I'm a new sure car you can. smell. Mm. The new car Tesla smell is really good, too. Uh, he made a point that it's very difficult to keep a car company afloat, and I didn't know this, but only two companies have ever not gone bankrupt in American history, which is Ford and Tesla, and Ford came very close, and Tesla also came very close. He said um, 2008 was not a good time for a car startup, especially for an electric vehicle. Elon's words were that doing that in 2008 was stupidity squared. So, is that a regret? Well, hopefully not, because Tesla's you know, doing well now. Um, this is a brief origin story, so bear with me. He falsely thought that he could convert a cheap... Sorry, convert a Lotus Elise into an electric car for cheap. He used a platform uh, and a company called AC Propulsion and tried to use their electric powertrain on that battery. Uh, in the end, they used nothing from, the, from that company and had to start their production from scratch. Um, adding a battery and electric motor made that car 30% heavier. And the original Tesla had less than 7% of parts in common with any other internal combustion engine vehicle. They had to change the air conditioning from a belt-driven to a small, efficient, compact, electric-driven compressor. The original Roadster was um, 2,700 pounds, which is just over a ton, with a 55% rear bias. Elon drove a Porsche, Porsche 911 before his Tesla, and now he drives a Model S P100D. Moving on to solar roof tiles, this is something I was interested in as well. Um, it's been slow to release because he's doing a lot of testing, and he rightly said that roof tiles need to last a long time, so they're doing a lot of testing. Um, you'd buy a roof, solar roof tiles in two situations, if you're re replacing the roof on your house, or if you're building a new home. And the concept of the roof tile is that you want you don't want to see the PV cells in the actual tile itself. Up close it's okay, but from the street, from a distance, you really don't want to see the cells. So he needs to get that right. That makes a lot of sense. We've already got solar panels, but if mm. the entire roof was basically one giant solar panel, um, that just makes a lot of sense. Yep, I agree. Um, he, uh, Joe asked Elon, would a solar roof be enough to supply your home? And um, Elon, he gave like a typical bell curve response where... He said, yes, depending on how much you use, it would be able to supply half to one and a half times your energy requirements, depending on how much you use. Um, the main power-hungry appliance in your home is air conditioning. For us here in Sydney, um, it's more about heating through the winter nights rather mm. than air conditioning in the summer. Yeah. We've also got quite good cross ventilation through mm. our house so that that helps a lot yeah. in saving on energy bills with aircon you really should be programming your aircon where you just use it in the in the areas of your room or in your house where you are present and then turn it off where you're not but he said that's just too hard for most people it's like programming a vcr and it's just going to blink on 12 all the time so people get lazy and leave it on the same temperature all day long we're so particular about only heating or cooling the area that we're in so mm. um I like I can't imagine that people would like yeah heat the whole house if they're only in one room or cool the whole, mm. whole house when they're not even at home. Do people really do that out there? I, I don't think know. they do. Well, if you do, leave a comment. Yeah, like yeah, to have the aircon running when you're not even at home. Yeah, I mean to me that's the easiest way to save on your power bills, just to manage your yep. thermostat a bit better. Then they smoke marijuana, so that's what everyone focused on. But honestly, that lasts for like not even a minute. 
I think. Yeah, I think he took like one puff and then he put it down. Yeah, one puff, yeah. and he just went. It doesn't affect me, and I don't. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't smoke weed because if I did, I wouldn't be as productive. I thought, mm. great response. There yeah. you go, kids. If you want to be productive like Elon Musk. <laughs> Don't do drugs. Even if it's legal. Yeah. Right. All right, Joy, thank you very much for joining us today. Very helpful to have you around to bounce ideas off. So thank no you very worries. much. I uh, hope you would all enjoyed that. All right, well, uh, please feel free to leave a comment and uh, and give me your thoughts if you've uh, watched the full interview or just based on my or our condensation of that interview. And uh, hopefully it's a lovely day wherever you are in this world. And as always... Happy charging. Happy charging, guys. Thanks for watching and thanks for being part of the energy revolution. If you haven't done so already, be sure to hit subscribe to stay up to date with our latest videos. If you're about to buy a Tesla, use my promo code THOMAS7208 to score 6 months of free supercharging. Happy charging!